Hello and welcome to the next video in which I will show you how to enable the auto reload feature in Ktor, how to turn on the development mode and what's even more important, what problems do these two help us with. As usual, a quick reminder that if you are looking for a comprehensive Ktor course, then you should check out my Ktor server pro course and you will find the link in the description for this video. But for now, without any further ado, let's head to work. Alright, so as the first step, let's navigate to start Cater IO page to generate a new Cater project if you don't have one. Uh, I will be creating the example of usage Kotlin HTML DSL with Cater. So let's navigate first. Start dot dot IO page. And in here. When it comes to project artifact, the only change in here will be com dot coder c uh, door for example html i don't care about the name that much we'll be using the latest stable we don't need the version catalog but the rest is totally up to you i will disable the samples even though it will still generate uh, some um, files for me anyway let's hit done when it comes to the plugins the only plugin that i will need today will be html dsl so this one that generates html from kotlin dsl when I add it, it will also add routing to the project. So that's perfectly fine for me. Let's hit download. Wonderful. And with that done, let's navigate to the downloads. Right mouse button. Let's extract all. Extract. And with that done, we can navigate to IntelliJ. Let's click open. In here, users, coder C, and navigate to downloads. In here, we can see this directory with small black icon let's click on it okay let's trust the project and let's make it a full screen uh following as we will i would like to be working with uh, jdk 23 so in here i can set that or not let's hit hansel actually uh we'll get open gradle settings so in the left upper part let's navigate to settings build execution deployment build tools Gradle and in here for the distribution I'll leave the wrapper. Nevertheless, from the for the JVM, I would like to set OpenJDK23 to work with it. Similarly, again, file, project structure, and for the SDK, let's it open, let's set open JDK. And for the language level, I prefer to use the SDK uh, default. Let's hit OK. We can see that. Your build is currently configured to use incompatible Java and Gradle 8.4. Uh, we can click in here to upgrade to Gradle 8.10 and resync. So let's click on it. Right now it may take some time, so let's wait for the Gradle to sync the project. Alright, so apparently everything is downloaded and we can see that the synchronization process finished. So let's navigate to HTML, SRC. Kotlin and in here that's what I mentioned when I click application KT we can see that it configured templating it's invoking configured routing so I'll get rid of these two even though they are empty I will close this one and get rid of these two as well so right now when I run the application it should be running perfectly let's do that to figure out if everything is set up correctly uh, the first run may take slightly longer Splendid. We can see that the application is running. So what we'll do next will be to expose the endpoint that will return a simple HTML hello world. All right. So inside the module, the only thing we'll need to do in Creator will be routing, routing, get to specify the get request to the root. This will be the path to which we'll be handling request in here. Call respond html and in here for the body html body we are already using the uh, kotlin html dsl plus hello world so with that done shift plus f10 to stop and rerun the application let's wait for it to start and what I expect here is whenever I reach to this address I should see the hello world uh, sign so let's get back to our Chrome browser, local host, 8080, let's hit enter, and this is the case. We can see hello world in here. 
Alright, so what is the problem here? Well, let's visualize that. So for that purpose, let's get back to IntelliJ IDEA and let's for example change the text to hello. Ctrl plus S to save and let's, back, let's get back to our Chrome browser. When I refresh, nothing happens. So the page does not reflect our code change until unfortunately we restart our server manually. So to see the hello, we should go back in here, stop and rerun. We'll have to wait for, uh, you know, everything to be built, uh, for the application to start once again. Now when I get back to Chrome, when I hit F5, we can see that the change is incorporated. So at this point, it will not be a big surprise if I say that the cater auto reload feature may be a great solution in here, right? But what is basically that? Well, let's get back to the application. So basically, this is the feature that we can turn on by enabling the development mode. And when you take a look at the logs of the running application, you will see that auto reload is disabled because the development mode is off. And when we enable the development mode and we do enable the auto reload, uh, Kator will start listening to the changes inside the build classes and resources. So by default, it will not be listening to the files, to our working files, but to the files generated inside the build. And please keep, uh, keep that in mind because we'll get back to that later. So as you may have guessed, the first thing that we must do will be to enable the development mode. And there are a bunch of ways. I will show you a few of them. So as the first one, let's take a look at the hard-coded approach. Let me stop the application. Let's go to build Gradle KTS. And the indication later that we enabled the mode will be uh, simply that this message will not be present anymore. So when you open up a build Gradle KTS, we can see that is development, Boolean flag. So firstly, we read if there is the argument development passed uh, to our Gradle task. And then if that's the case, we pass uh, the JVM argument dash D IO cater development uh, and we pass this flag. So, well, the easy and dummy approach will be to simply hard code the value, right? So instead of reading the is development, we'll pass the true flag. Let's sync the project. Let's wait for it. It should take not too long. Now let's try to run the application. And unfortunately, we can still see that auto reload is off. By what is that happening? Well, basically, when we run this way the application, when you navigate, when you click run uh, on the main method, this is not Gradle task that is invoked under div. And for that purpose, to use Gradle instead, uh, we would have to either use the Gradle tasks, uh, for example, application run. So let's see if this is working. And now we can see there is no such a message, which means that the development mode is on. Alternatively, you can go to the terminal and using terminal, Gradle run. This will have the exact same effect. All right, let's wait for the comment to start. And we can see the server started and the development mode is turned on. Nevertheless, speaking of the solution itself, it is not so convenient. This is hard coded. Uh, we do not have control over that uh, too much, so we cannot adjust that per environment, for example, for the development, etc. So instead of doing that, let's bring back, bring back what we had already in here. So instead of hard coding, let's refresh. So let's learn how we can pass the argument. And that's basically easy. Let me terminate the previous job. Let's make it bigger. Let me clear. And now Gradle run dash P development. So we pass the program argument to that. So again, instead of hard coding, Right now, we have the possibility to go with both ways. When I stop this one, let's terminate. And when I run the Gradle job, the previous Gradle job without the flag, well, without the flag, we can see that auto reload is disabled. And alternatively, we have the flag, it is enabled. So that's one way to go. Another way is to pass 
the VM option. So what we already saw in here. So for that purpose, to prove that, I'll get rid completely of that from the application. Let me reload the changes once again. And when it's done, let's open up terminal. And this time, instead of passing the dash p development, I will be passing the JVM argument. So for that purpose, Gradle, now dash d io dot cater dot development equals true and run. You can spot the difference. Uh, when passing VM options, it must go before the run command. And that was whenever we were passing program arguments, this was the last sentence. Anyway, let's try to run this right now. And we can see that this is working, the development mode is on. So let me stop the application. And why this feature is also cool? Because we can use that with IntelliJ Run. So when I open up configurations, Edit configurations. So this one was Gradle. All right. So it would be working exactly the same as running the command for the Kotlin. Well, application KT. We can see that we have the possibility to pass the VM option right here. And if you remember, when working with Gradle, it was not working out of the box. And with this option, we can go with dash D IO cater development equals true. Now let's hit OK and let's try to run that. Excellent. So we can see that this option gives us even more flexibility. All right. So whenever you want to run that, either with Gradle or directly from IntelliJ, it will be working fine. Lastly, we can also set that in application YAML file. So let me stop the application. Let's edit the configuration and let's get rid of that to be sure that uh, we do that from application yam and let's open up resources application yam and in here cater development deva true development true and we can see that this is pretty much the same thing as we specified as vm option cater dot development true let's try to run that excellent so we can see the development mode is on and it works exactly the same. And this way we can have also some flexibility. For example, instead of hard coding in here, uh, we could have sourced that from environment variables. So the decision is up to you. You've seen a bunch of options how to enable that. And the important part is that we enable that. So let's take a look if any changes taken into consideration. So we have the hello. Let's open up the browser. Let's refresh in here. We can see hello. Now, when I get back, I would like to bring back the hello world. Control plus S. Let's get back to the Chrome. Oh, sorry for switching windows like that. Anyway, we can see that nothing is happening. And we enabled the feature. We are sure that we enabled that and nothing is still happening. But why is that? Well, as I mentioned previously, the Cater Auto Reload feature looks for the output files. So in order for that change, to be sourced without restarting the server, we must build the project and we can do that in a few ways. Let's take a look at the manual ones first. So let's get back to IntelliJ, HTML, in here, this one, build, build project. All right. I am not restarting the server. So let's get back to Chrome. When I refresh the page, we can see that the change was taken into consideration. So. The good news is that we do not need to restart our application, but the bad one is that still manual. So before we head to the next step, I will show you one more manual way. So let's get back to the application. Hero World 2. And let's open up the terminal. So just like we did that with um, the IntelliJ, we can use Gradle, Gradle, build. We can skip tests, for example. Sorry test. The task is test. Gradle build and let's keep the testing. It will take uh, faster, well, even though we don't have test. All right, the build is successful. So again, I am not restarting the application. Let's get back to Chrome. When I refresh the page, we can see Hero World too. So we spare some time on restarting the server. Anyway, still, in my opinion, this is not 
too convenient way. But in Gradle, we can enable the continuous build mode. And this way, we can automate the whole process. So in our window, let's clear that. I'll go for Gradle-T build. This is the task that I would like to run, dash X test. So again, I will be skipping the test. And anyway, with this flag or alternatively with dash dash continuous, we instruct Gradle to watch for changes in the source files. So from now on, Gradle will be work, will be looking for our changes in our code files. And automatically, if it detects any change to that, it will build it will run the build task. So let's try and let's figure out if this is working. So we can see the build successful. It is waiting. And for example, let me put to control plus S and we can see something is happening in here. So when I get back to the Chrome, I should see change. Wonderful. Now when I get back to again, blah, 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 control plus S, we can see that the Gradle task is running in the meantime. When I get back to Chrome, Wonderful. So we can see that from now on we can add any changes without restarting the server, without manually building the project. So we kind of automated the process and in my humble opinion it can spare us a lot of time, especially when dealing with such an HTML tasks. Lastly, before we wrap this video, I would like to show you how you can narrow down watched files because in this case we have only a few files, all right? So in your case, sometimes it may make sense to narrow down the watched files. So again, let's get back to IntelliJ. Let's open up. And as I mentioned previously, Kator will be looking basically in the build, classes, Kotlin, main, uh, com, metainf, and additionally, resources. Let's break it a bit. So let's take a look how we can uh, narrow this down. So I'll stop the application. I'll stop the Gradle task. Yes. And let's open up application YAM. So in here, under the deployment, we have the port. And I would like to add one more thing. Watch. And in here, instruct cater to watch only for resources. So the only thing that you need to specify in the watch is the part of the path like, for example, classes or resources. And from now on, Kator will be only listening for changes to those and it will ignore the classes. So when I run the application first, it's running. When I start the Gradle build, it's executing. Wonderful. Let's get back to the application. Control plus S. Let's open up Chrome. Let's refresh. We can see that it's working. Let's get back in here. Let's bring back the old good hello world. So Gradle. Gradle is building. So we are sure that classes are generated. But when I get back to Chrome, when I hit refresh, we can see that Kator does not listen for classes for classes anymore. It listens only for resources. So for example, if you would like to only listen for resources to put some files in the replace files and you don't want to wait too long because you have a lot of classes and it will take way longer, then this may be the case for you. And that's all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to never miss any new videos related to Kotlin on the backend. So see you around. Bye.